the news tonight. President Mohamed Buhari decorates new acting IGP Mohamed Adamu. And in business, 11 private firms jostled to take over a Jokuta steel complex. And on the foreign scene, ICC acquits Lauren Babo of crimes against humanity. Welcome to Super Screen's flagship news. We're broadcasting to you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olamide Onka. Many thanks for joining us tonight. We'll start the news with a story where President Mohamed Buhari has appointed Mohamed Abubakar as the new Inspector General of Police. The president, who decorated the new IGP at the State House Abuja, was assisted by the immediate past police Inspector General Ibrahim Idris. Addressing journalists shortly after his appointment, the newly appointed Inspector General of Police Abubakar Damu promised to tackle kidnapping and other security challenges in the country. We know there are challenges, security challenges that we need to tackle in the country. We have uh, issues of kidnapping, we have issues of uh, uh, abduction, we have some other security challenges and we are going to re-strategize. From the strategy the former Inspector General put in place, we will re-strategize to make sure that uh, we tackle uh, these challenges head on. On the election, the, we've heard from the former Inspector General of Police, um, adequate arrangement has been made to make sure that um, free and fair and credible election takes place uh, in Nigeria. And uh, we're going to build up on the strategies put in place to also make sure that we have a uh, free uh, election in the country. We're going to stick by the rules we're going to do the right thing. Um, we will not go outside the, 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 the actions of our job to do things that are untoward. Everybody will be given level playing ground to play his, his or her politics. Adamu's appointment lays to rest the controversy surrounding the retirement of the former Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, as there were speculations the president might extend his tenure. The former IG Ibrahim Idris turned 60 on the January 15th. And to other stories now, the coalition of the United Political Parties, UPP, have celebrated the exit of the outgoing Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, from the force after attaining the mandatory 60-year retirement age with the cutting of a birthday cake. Briefing journalists in Abuja shortly before the ceremonial cutting of the cake at the Grand Alliance headquarters, CUPP spokesperson Imo Ikenga urged the acting Inspector General of Police, Abubakar Adamu, to immediately release all politicians detained by his former boss on trumped up charges. For us to have confidence in the new acting Inspector General of Police, who will soon take office likely today, we we'll have some grants, minimum grants, that the opposition expects that within the next seven days, the, the new acting inspector general of police will show his body language in fulfilling. One is that the opposition is demanding that the new acting inspector general of police that will soon take office should release immediately all political detainees and activists that have been arrested in the course of the inglorious stay of the outgoing IG of police. Top among them, is a foremost activist who is languishing in Kano Central Prison, Deji Adeyinju, who protested against the police involvement in political activities. Also is Dino Melaya, who the police have, instead of facing prosecution, have been persecuting in the last one year. Two, the opposition is demanding that the new acting Inspector General of Police should make a commitment to the political parties not engage in massive arrest of opposition leaders few days or hours to the election, which is a pattern that was deployed by the outgoing Inspector General of Police in Oshun and Ekiti. The King of Further said, following the retirement of the outgoing Inspector General of Police, the coalition had suspended its nationwide protest earlier scheduled to begin today and charged Adamu not to tow the part of his predecessor in the discharge of his duties. We are demanding that the new acting inspector general of police should reverse the appointment of an acting CP in Lagos. It is so shameful 
that the outgoing IG can appoint a former security aide of the leader of the APC campaign, Aswaju Bola Tinubu, as an acting inspector general of police. And not that he's even a CP. The man is a DCP. And then you make him an acting CP. Does it mean that there's nobody that has capacity among the top rank of the police in Lagos to act? And knowing that he's an, a security aide to the uh, 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 Aswaju Bola Tinubu makes it very ridiculous. And that will compromise the security and safety of Lagosians, and also as we approach the 2019 general election. And our members of the Armed Forces and Diplomatic Corps today paid respect to the fallen heroes in a commemoration of the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day, which climaxed with a red lane and a grand finale at the National Arcade in Abuja. The event commenced with prayers offered for the report souls of those who died in the active service by clerics from the Christian and the Islamic faith. The Armed Forces Remembers Day is an annual event organized to honor soldiers who died during the First and Second World War, the Nigeria Civil War, and those fighting insurgency. At this year's grand finale, held at the National Arcade in Abuja, Members of the Armed Forces and Diplomatic Corps paid respect to the fallen heroes with clerics and clergy alike offering prayers for them, their family members, and the protection of living members of the Armed Forces, while a minute silence was held in honor of the fallen heroes. The President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Mohamedou Buhari, led the government's delegation to perform the brief Elaine ceremony. It is the first time President Buhari, as the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, is laying a wreath in a democratic setting. Present at the event are Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, President of the Senate of Kolasaraki, the Speaker House of Representatives, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onagan, a Minister of Defense, Mansoudan Ali, a Minister of FCT, Mohammed Behlo, a National Security Advisor, Major General Babagana Mungono, retired, a members of the Military Widows Association, National President of Nahua, Hajia UK Bratai, and a host of other dignitaries. And now the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, Justice Adamu Abdul Kafarati, has granted the request by the President of the Nigeria Bar Association, MBA, Paul Usoro, for a change of judge and the 1.4 billion fraud charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Following Usoro's letter to the CJ, his case had been withdrawn from Justice Muslim Hassan of the Federal High Court in Lagos and reassigned to Justice Chuka Obiozo of the same court. You will recall that the EFCC had on December 18 arraigned Usoro on 10 counts before Justice Hassan, who admitted him to a 250 million naira bail. The absence of Dino Milai in court on Monday has stalled his trial before Justice Olasumbo Goodluck of the Abuja Federal High Court. The senator representing Kogi West in the National Assembly is facing a two-count charge bordering on giving false information to the police. The prosecuting counsel, Shwaib Laboran, had arraigned Milai allegedly for giving false information that incriminated David Onoja, the chief of staff to the Kogi state governor, as the mastermind of an assassination attempt on his life. The prosecution counsel further alleged that Milai had in April 2017 given false statement during a phone conversation with Mohammed Abubakar, son of the late former governor of Kogi state, Abudu Abubakar. And our lawyers in the country have described the large number of political parties in Nigeria as an aberration. Speaking at the 15th Gani Fawemi annual lecture in Lagos, these lawyers berated the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, saying the high number of political parties is a distraction to the electoral process. The electoral body cannot be taken for granted. One can as well be goodbye to free, fair, credible, and transparent elections. However, an unbiased and non-partisan electoral body does not drop from the sky. It has to be created and nurtured 
by law and society, and is driven by men and women of unimpeachable character and the right disposition for it to effectively perform its ascribed role. On the number of political parties in the country, with profound respect is rather dangerous. When you talk of a little to the left and a little to the right, what on the left, what on the right? Now, if you want to know, if you want to study the proliferation of political parties in Nigeria, it was a deliberate policy by the PDP government of Obasanjo and now being continued by the APC to have so many political parties by lowering the standards and not really provide the serious conditionalities to them. I'm sure you are, you know, you are witnessing endorsement of some so-called major political parties in Nigeria. I thought what should be discussing really is how to ensure that every political party in Nigeria comply with section 224 of the constitution that provides that the aims and objectives and manifestos of every political party in Nigeria shall reflect and conform with chapter 2 of the constitution. They also showered encomiums on the late activist Gani Faoemi as they reflect on his life and times. One of the best courtroom advocates ever produced by Nigeria, a legal researcher, a human encyclopedia of law, a committed barman of awesome legal authorities. And I say this because Chief Awemi can make submissions of 1,000 words in one second. I have witnessed in court before Mr. Lee of Awemi, Mr. Lange. An activist with unparalleled credentials of the new activism in Nigeria. A defender of the Dan Project, which earned him the award of Senior Advocate of the Masses SAM, and a protector of rule of law, whose instrument of war is not AK-47, but the court of law. Commending the life, the struggle, and the work of late Chief Ganifa and SAM, and the take home I always have from this program. It's those of us who are here now, who are fighting, who are working. When we go across to the other side, will we be decelebrated? The work of Ghani can never be replicated, it can only be celebrated. I commend the family for keeping the work of Ghani alive. And now the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has released the regulations and guidelines for the conduct of the general elections. INEC, who disclosed this to journalists, said each voter will cast his or vote in person at the polling unit where he or she registered or is assigned in the manner prescribed by the commission. The agency stressed a separate queue will be created between men and women where the culture does not allow the mingling of men and women. INEC said presiding officers will also create a separate queue for people living with disabilities, adding that voting shall be in accordance with the continuous accreditation and voting system procedures. And now the All Progressives Congress, APC, has asked the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to allow the law run its course regarding the prosecution of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Onogin. APC National Publicity Secretary Isao Nilu, who disclosed this to journalists in Abuja, said the party is wondering whether there is an unholy alliance between PDP and the CJN, accusing the PDP of always being quick to defend corruption. Following the notice of the charges preferred against the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, by the Code of Conduct Bureau, at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. The People's Democratic Party has been an, on overdrive, making so much noise over an issue that should at best be left to the judiciary to resolve. Why we would not want to be lured into discussing issues that are presently before the courts and for which any respectable party open to hold positions 
of responsibility should refrain itself. We regret to suggest that the PDP's attempt to hoodwink Nigerians into believing that there is a political motive behind the allegation brought against the CJN might itself be indicative of some unholy alliances. The likely affinity existing between the PDP and a section of the judiciary is further accentuated by the non-appearance of the Justice Onogen said the likely affinity existing between PDP and a section of the judiciary is further accentuated by the non-appearance of Justice Onogen before the Court of Conduct Tribunal on Monday, in line with the suggestions made by PDP governors from the South South on Sunday. And now the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has called on Nigerians to brace up for the February 16, 2019 presidential elections as the only way to defend and save the nation from what it termed fascism being plotted by the All Progressives Congress. Olobodinho alleged that the APC and its candidate, President Mohamed Buhari, is seeking ways to emerge the election in crisis and in order to stalemate the electoral process and pave way for rigging and actualization of plots to ensure President Mohamed Buhari remains in office. Perhaps President Buhari has forgotten that Nigeria is a democratic state and he needs to be reminded that as a people we have chosen democracy as a form of government with, a, with its personal freedom, liberty and rule of law that it guarantees. Nigerians will never accept any kind of draconian rule and dictatorial tendencies. We therefore charge all Nigerians, all victims of injustice, and brutality of the Buhari presidency. All victims of the mindless killings encouraged by the insensitivity of the Buhari presidency. All those impoverished by the corruption and incompetence of the Buhari administration. And all lovers of democracy in our nation to get ready to defend our nation and save her from the fascism by voting out President Buhari on February 16, 2019. The February presidential election will be a referendum for our freedom. Recent trial of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Nogan, PDP alleged that the action is an assault on the institution of the judiciary and the courts by President and the APC. And now the Nigeria police have paraded five victims of child trafficking and child labor. Also paraded a suspect allegedly involved in the process. In this report, Superscreen compiles this. These are victims of child trafficking rescued by the Nigeria police force from places where they were used as helpmates by their masters. Some of them come from Benin Republic where they were handed to the middlemen who serve as a medium between the provider and those in need of a service after much negotiations. Speaking to Superscreen Television, this victim and her mother narrates the ordeal. One woman is carrying me come for Lagos. My, my house? Yes, your house. Kuton, eh, Koton. That woman is carrying me come. He carry me go to Lagos. My, my auntie, they sell baby thing for the Lagos. So, me too, I help my auntie small, small, they sell markets. I don't, I don't, I don't go to school. So, I say, I bring them from Nigeria. Then say, they, will, they go, they pay them five, five, five thousand. We talk. Then say, I should collect money. I say, no, make it work. A year before I come, come collect money, carry on, make go learn work. When I come, the woman said the girl don't lost. So now the girl make me go come this place, eh? may they help me to find the girl out. I cannot do it again. I cannot do it again. Although they blame poverty and ignorance, these women who were supposedly caught in the act pleaded forgiveness. Oh, well, 
We get the children from a certain lady. I don't know her house, and I am not really familiar with her. She has brought three young girls for me. Those ones refused to work, so they went back. I have just a little girl with me who works. They receive 5,000 naira as payment on a monthly basis. I pay to the woman whom I have already paid six months. I have been in this business for up to two years. With this issue I'm in, I will never engage in this act again. Even the child who works for me, I won't accept anyone. It is a certain lady who resides in my house that engages in the act, and she knows I'm a trader. For the child I gave to them, we were paid 3,500. I will never do it again. Please, forgive Reacting, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Chioma Junwa, implored parents to desist from the act and engage their conscience at all times. Well, my advice to them is that everybody should pinch, they should pinch themselves. You know, if, he, if they feel the pain, they know that the mothers of these children or these children themselves will feel the pain. You let your own children go to school, then you are using this one as a slave trade. It is not right. They should know that the one day that the law must surely cut up with them. And then the parents should desist from giving their children to other women. No woman, no man can take care of your child the way you will do. The United Nations. Coming up on Super Screen's flagship news, 11 private firms jostled to take over a Jalkota steel company. Details of this story after this break. Welcome back to Super Screen News and now for some business stories. The Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, Abuba Kabwari, says at least more than 11 private firms are currently jostling to take over the Ajaokuta Steel Complex. Bwari, who made this known to journalists at the presentation of the ministry's three-year stewardship account in Abuja, said the government prefer a private Nigerian consortium to take over the management of the company. In other business news, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says deposit money banks should forego the interest charged on petrol subsidy induced loans given to all marketers from June 2017 to December 2018. The CBN conveyed the message to bank in a message with the team and the marketers last month as part of efforts to resolve the outstanding subsidy debt owed by the federal government to marketers. According to the Apex Bank, rather than lose all the money, the bank should reverse one-third of it and find ways to pay the balance. And then still in business, the federal government says it borrowed 1.16 trillion naira in a bid to finance fiscal and infrastructure development while stating that the state government raised 125.59 billion in new debt capital. The NSE Chief Executive Officer, Oscar Onyema, who disclosed this to journalists in Lagos, said the market witnessed the listing of 100 billion federal government Ijara Sukuk designed to finance critical road infrastructure across the country. Still ahead tonight on Super Screen's Flash of News, ICC acquits former Ivory Coast president of crimes against humanity after seven years. That's on the foreign scene. Details of this story and many more after this break. 